Education forms one of the most important pillars of any society. With the growing oil and gas and hospitality industry, the demand increases for educated and skilled Guyanese. This reality, therefore, mandates that the government makes the necessary investments to ensure that every citizen is guaranteed access to education. The BBPC administration has made significant strides in ensuring that its manifesto promises for the education sector are realized. A key promise of the government has been the restoration of the Because We Care cash grant to students. While the previous grant was $10,000, the government increased it to $15,000 per child and included an additional $4,000 per child in the form of a uniform and school supplies grant. This has brought the total up to $19,000 per public school student. Looking at the news and so on, I'm, I'm quite pleased see that we have a government now that actually care for citizens in this country because whether it be it agriculture, education, and as you speak, education, our students in St. Cuthbert's and the country at whole will benefit from something that, that never happened in the past five years. And I must commend the ministry and the government for that. Our students will benefit from a 19,000 cash grant, which is a big plus and help to the parents not only in St. Cuthbert's, but Guyana. Approximately 172,000 students will benefit immediately from the program, with some $3.2 billion being spent. The government plans to increase that amount every year until each child receives $50,000. I think the Because We Care cash grant is one noble gesture in the sense that you have considered the needs of the learners and more specifically the, the fact that education will be fortified and in that regard it's a good initiative in my opinion. I am extremely elated, I'm grateful for this cash grant because there are many parents like myself that have multiple children, I have five and this this is going to be very, very useful. It's going to come in very handy, especially, I mean, it is meant for the children, for the use of the children, for school supplies and so on. But there are many other things that parents can use, can use it for, apart from the school supplies, things that also benefit the children. My name is Hemoti Passad, and I have five grand. I mine the grandchild from two-day-old baby. And I'm so happy that I um, received this cash grant. It, it worked a lot to me. I will take it and buy school clothes for the child and other needs. The government has also promised the rollout of 20,000 scholarships during its first term in office. The rollout has already started with the first 6,000 scholarships being issued this year through the GAN Online Academy of Learning. The scholarships are intended to benefit every Guyanese over the age of 18, regardless of ethnicity, geographic location or political persuasion. We are not here to serve PPP supporters alone or to serve the parents of students who are here who voted for us. We are here to serve every single Guyanese, regardless of how you voted, regardless of where you live. We're standing with you and supporting you and giving you the push you need to take you to the next level. Potential beneficiaries are pleased not only with the government's fulfillment of its manifesto promise so quickly, but the fact that higher education is being made so accessible. I think it's a good initiative in a sense that um, I see a lot of young people um, being able to get themselves qualified or upgrade the um, qualification, and especially now in this pandemic where they have the opportunity to do it in the comfort of their own homes, and so I'm hoping that, you know, they really, really, really um, take this opportunity 
and make good use of it, seeing it is free. One of the things that I, I like about the program is that, as the minister said, not only for students who have qualifications, CXE, CAPE and so on, but those who um, do have any qualifications, they have the um, opportunity to do something better themselves, put themselves out there in the world and they can become, you know, someone better in society. The Ministry of Public Service is tasked with management of the award of the scholarships on the distortship of Minister Sonia Parag. We recognize that we need a brighter future. We recognize that we need to give education equally to our Guyanese not just a category of Guyanese who are able to get it. But those of you who can't even connect to the internet, we're going to provide that service for you so that you're able to conveniently attain or achieve that higher education. In addition to the goal initiative, Guyanese were also provided with the opportunity to utilize the Coursera platform to earn professional certificates. Despite assuming office during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Ministry of Education hit the ground running, brainstorming and implementing strategies to meaningfully engage students who were away from school. Worksheets for each grade were developed and packages were distributed across the 10 administrative regions. Teachers were also required to utilize online platforms to virtually engage students while the government works on making electronic tablets accessible to those who needed them the most. We have done several things including engagements online. We have uh, dedicated the learning channel to timetable instruction. We have been using the radio. We have done worksheets. Um, all of those have been effective to some extent but none will be able to trump the value of a teacher in front of the classroom. We could not send our children back and our teachers back without um, hearing from teachers, hearing from students, hearing from parents, and making sure what they told us was uh, what we did. But more was needed for students who were about to sit local and regional examinations. After careful consideration and several multi-stakeholder engagements, including with medical professionals, the government decided to reopen schools for upper secondary students and those in technical and vocational institutions. The different schools will use different approaches. We have allowed wide latitude. We're not from the ministry using the big stick approach and saying you must do this or you must do that. We're giving schools the opportunity to set their own timetable and their own schedules with the view that um, they best know what, what they have to do to achieve the purpose of getting our children learning. The Ministry of Education pulled out all the stops to ensure adequate measures were put in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Care packages which included masks, hand sanitizers, vitamins and face shields were distributed to students, teachers and staff. But even as schools reopened, the pandemic highlighted many challenges in the education sector. With school doors closed and traditional teaching restricted, more had to be done for students. The utilization of virtual platforms took center stage for teachers to engage students. The Smart Classroom initiative was extended. Among the schools that benefited from these were Queen's College, President's College, Brickdown Secondary School, East Rheinfeld Multilateral, the North Secondary and several schools in the East Burbies quarantine region. So we're not going to leave it up to schools to roll this out how they want to. We're building out a whole ICT smart room usage across the education sector and how it is these smart classrooms could reinforce, enhance and reach people who don't yet have them. How it could reach the students who need that reinforcement. Chief Education Officer Dr. Marcel Hudson says this rollout is in keeping with the government's strategic education development plan. In a smart classroom basically creates the atmosphere as, as, as if it's a face, as if it's uh, interaction between teacher and, and um, student in real time. So you could be in Ramadan and I could be at any sort and I'm teaching and you could say sir I would like you to go for this point again and so that happens in real time with record lessons that are recorded you don't have that luxury where the teacher could actually interact um, with the student in, in, in real time and I think that's that's a beautiful 
thing about the smart classroom you the student could ask questions questions could be answered there and then and this kind of rapport and interaction that gives life to, to teaching and learning at president's college approximately 800 students stand to benefit from the initiative we are grateful that in this age of technology or we say advancing technology president's college is given the privilege of making a leap towards improving the delivery of education for change for our children to do more to bring more to the table and to be able to access the scholarships that are available in our country today. Today, 299 students, due to the COVID pandemic, can stand to benefit from this venture. Those in their homes, totaling 577 students, will also benefit, and many more in the future. As a complement to the smart classrooms, the Dr. Irfan Ali-led government allocated $200 million for the expansion of the Ghana Learning Channel in one of its earliest interventions in the sector. This move benefited students from year one kindergarten to grade 11. This budget that you say provides nothing for anyone is given $200 million for the expansion of the channel. And you know what that expansion will entail? That expansion would entail us having six learning channels at the same time. So the problem the member complains about, which is we have to start from 8 o'clock, we could start from 10 and take nursery all the way till 3 o'clock. And we could start grade one on the other channel and take it teach whole days. It's not two hours, two hours. That is vision. That is putting your money where your mouth is. We want to serve the people. Head of the Ghana Learning Channel, Ms. Bibi Anisha Mohammed, says with the investment by the government, the Ghana Learning Channel will be able to transmit in high definition. We're um, doing a project with the Ministry of Education that enables us to provide um, televisions as well as satellite and solar to power these um, equipment in all 210 plus hinterland, river and communities throughout the country. It's going to provide um, the schools with not only access to the learning channel, however that's the core need and, and where we hope the community is going to benefit most from. But they're also going to be given 80 plus other channels that the community um, collectively can make use of in, on weekends and when the students are not utilizing it. Parents welcome the move by the government as they noted that students are benefiting in a tangible way. For me, for a mother, it's very good because there's most of the time I always tell them, look at that stage, look at that stage, so they can learn from it. Because they show different, different programs. It's learn to spell, you know, to do maths. Sometimes I look at the you know, channel, so, you know, they, you know, they, it's edifying, it's edifying for the youth then, because at least it seems that they go to school and then, they, you know what I mean, at least they, 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 they learn something from, you know what I mean, whatsoever they be teaching on the channel. Additionally, the Ghana Learning Channel has launched WizKid, a game show to help students prepare for the National Grade 6 assessment. The government has also invested in the rehabilitation and construction of new schools countrywide to ensure students are comfortably accommodated when in-person classes resume. Much has been accomplished in the education sector over the last year, with the government demonstrating its commitment to ensuring Guyanese have access to opportunities at all levels. Over the next four years, citizens can look forward to great investments within the sector, which will enhance their skills and marketability on the world stage.